All righty. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order at 6.17 p.m. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Gabriel Kellen. I am the president of Porter Ranch Neighborhood Council. I have a few announcements to make. This meeting is being recorded, and the recording will be available on our PRNC YouTube page, as well as our webpage, prnc.org. All meeting attendees will be automatically muted when they join the meeting. Attendees will address the board in one of two situations. Number one, comment on agenda item, or number two, provide a general public comment. After each agenda item is read out loud and before a board vote is taken on any item, I will ask if any board members wish, any members wanna wish, uh, give public comment and address the board uh, at the time. I'm all over the place today. At the time, the meeting attendees can electronically raise their hand to speak by pressing star nine if they are using a telephone for audio or clicking the raise your hand button on Zoom. That will prompt the presiding officer that you wish to speak. I'll go down the list of those who raise their hand, turn on their audio one at a time and ask him or her to go ahead and provide public comment within a specific time period. When the speaker's time expires, I will let the speaker know that their time has expired, thank them for their comment, turn off their audio for the speaker and proceed. The process will continue until all attendees who have raised their hand have spoken. At that time, the board will discuss the motion and take a vote if they wish to do so. As noted in the meeting agenda, there is an item dedicated to public comment on items not on the agenda, but within a purview of the board. When the item comes up during the course of the meeting, I will ask if any member of the public wishes to address the board regarding any issue that is not on the agenda, but is within the domain of the board's action and capabilities. At that time, the meeting attendees can electronically raise their hand to speak using the same procedure described previously. Please note that under the Brown Act, the board is prevented from discussing or acting on a matter that is brought to its attention during the general public comment period. However, the issue raised by a member of the public may become the subject of a future board meeting. Public comments are limited to two minutes per speaker unless adjusted by presiding officer at his or her discretion. Let's move forward with roll call, Christine. All right, David Lasher. Here. David Balin. Here. Hilda. Here. Jason. Absent, I believe. Luis. Absent. Becky. Present. Brandy is absent. Jennifer. Here. Voss. Here. Myself here and Gabriel. I am here. Thank you. And we have a quorum. Perfect. We have three, four, five, eight, eight members present. Thank you. One second. Actually, I see Lewis that just came in. So Lewis is here. Let's move on to the next item, which is the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, stand up. Yeah. Face the flag. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, we go. I, I pledge allegiance, allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic, which stands one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. All right, next item is president's comments. I wanna start off by saying we had two wonderful events last week. Thank you Chatsworth High School for allowing us to have a booth at the Carnival of Knowledge. And thank you Paula Craigium for giving us a booth at the Chatsworth Street Fair block party. Both events were a blast. I wanna thank Becky and Hilda for volunteering their time and manning both the Carnival of Knowledge and Chatsworth Street Fair with me and my son, Jaden. I wanna thank Christine for volunteering her time for Carnival of Knowledge. And I wanna thank David Balin and Lewis for helping man the Carnival, the Chatsworth Street Fair Carnival. Thank you everyone for that. And I encourage in the future, I know a lot of board members wanted to be there, but they couldn't on this one. I encourage all board members to volunteer in the future. It is fun uh, speaking to stakeholders, interacting, see what they want, giving them free prizes, et cetera. And it's a great outreach to meet face-to-face -face with uh, other stakeholders, even other councils and 
everyone else there. Um, also yesterday we had the air monitoring community meeting and I noticed some of you did attend. It is very important for uh, Argos to get feedback from the community. So in the next meeting, I encourage everyone to show up and ask questions and um, help through the process because it is very important for the meeting for uh, the air monitoring to be in the community. Also, as you see, we're still on Zoom. Honestly, I think it's time to meet in person, but the city does not want to yet. I'm hoping that in the near future, we will meet in person and maybe we can still broadcast Zoom at the same time as we're meeting in person. I think it's a lot more personal and uh, hands-on. Next item, I, next agenda item is uh, updates from representatives of public officials and city departments. I do see a few uh, in, I guess I see Colin Cruz already holding up his hand. Uh, there's also Diana there and Garrett. Okay, let's start with Colin Cruz. One second, please. Colin Cruz, uh, I moved you in. Floor is yours. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Gabriel. Uh, thank Colin you. here uh, with uh, Councilmember John Lee's office. Uh, just to echo what Gabriel said, thank you to everybody that came out to the events this weekend. We had a lot going on. Uh, and I think they were all very, very successful. And, and thank you to everybody uh, that showed up. And, uh, and of course, everybody that organized these events. Uh, first up, I uh, want to mention that the council approved an ordinance to make the verification of vaccine cards voluntary for covered locations and to remove the requirement for large outdoor events. So hopefully we'll continue heading in the right direction with the whole pandemic. And then I also mainly want to just give some updates that some of you I'm sure are already aware of regarding the, uh, the uh, 50 acre park. Uh, speed bumps have been approved and permitted. Uh, the speed bumps won't be installed until the very end of the project when the paving is complete. But I know that was a request that came from the community. Uh, the, spot, the splash pad has been removed. The trees and the fencing that'll go along the access road, uh, separating it from the homes behind the park. Uh, the fencing will be upsized to between five and six feet. And the trees that are gonna be planted are gonna be more mature trees to provide more coverage. Uh, to the area, you know, again, out of the request, out of the uh, coming from the community. Uh, DWP uh, says the site won't be energized until some uh, switch gear is installed. And the, so the street lights that are gonna be installed are still, are still a little bit away. It's probably at least a few months away. Uh, we hope to complete the project as soon as possible, hopefully, um, you know, this year, maybe even in the third quarter of this year. Uh, you know, <laughs> permitting the permitting, frankly. <laughs> so, uh, you know, everything seems to be on track and uh, we're really excited to get that, uh, get that up and running. And that's, that's what I got guys. Thank you. Uh, board members, any questions? Um, yeah, ahead, congratulations Mike. on opening up portos yesterday or the day before. That was a big <laughs> event. That was awesome. That was a very big event. I, I was not able to attend, but uh, I hear they were uh, lined up around the block. Oh, I drove by. There were at least 200 people in line. <laughs> at least. Yeah, we're really excited about that opening. Thank you, John, for everything you did to help push that through. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. David Asher? Hey, Colin. Good to uh, see you. Um, two hey, things. Um, I haven't been down there in the last couple of days, but Tampa from further out of our district, but all the way down toward um, uh, Lassen has the street lights have been out for several weeks. Um, last I heard was they were out of transformers or they were stolen. As soon as they put new wiring in, it was stolen and all the street lights dropped out. It's like pitch black when you're driving from um, Rinaldi and Tampa all the way south through to Lassen. I, I don't know if that's been fixed in the last couple of days, but it was quite a while. It's been like that. And then um, May 15th, looks like the RV ordinance expires, so they can start dealing with the RVs. We're not going to yeah, have so, some other exception to it, are we? Well, I mean, yes, that, that, is, that is true. Uh, uh, so wherever there is restricted parking signs, uh, expired regis registration, uh, 
inoperable vehicles, we will be able to impound uh, even if they are occupied. Uh, the devil is always in the details, and there is, there is, uh, there is, there are protocols to follow. It's not like prior to COVID, where you know if the RV is occupied but it's inoperable, you know it can be it can be impounded. There there are outreach measures that have to be performed prior. And, you know, the boots on the ground that are going to be doing this work are, you know, LAPD officers and our parking enforcement officers. Uh, they're waiting to get clarity on how this is all going to shake out from, from you know, their, their bosses. Uh, but yes, it is, a, it is a step forward in terms of illegally parked, unregistered vehicles, uh, vehicles that are falling apart. Uh, you know, we just have to get the... Uh, we just have to find out how it's all going to work. Like right now, even, you know, having read the motion several times, I'm not sure how, what the, uh, what the mechanisms are. I know that LASA has to go. I know there has to be a certain number of warnings from parking enforcement or LAPD. Uh, it's kind of a matter of how is that going to be tracked? Like, how do we know that some, that, that these teams have been there, however, the prerequisite number of times are, but yeah, you're right. It is, it is moving forward. We have, we have turned a bit of a corner. Well, luckily, we have a lesser impact than some other areas. The, the, your district as a whole has all sorts of issues, but Puerto Ranch only has a couple. We definitely have the one that's been at, uh, on the north side of Rinaldi at, near Wilbur for months. It always seems to have a very nice Mercedes park in front of it. And then uh, the one that the, I just heard by there 10 minutes ago, the, wow, between Zelza coming down the little incline there toward the park, there must be yeah. nine, and they're in horrible shape. They're pieces parts everywhere it's, it's it's crazy but thank you for that yeah yeah that area we're looking to put up the restricted parking signs but obviously some of those vehicles are likely uh expired registration and you know probably inoperable some of them so so while the process of getting the signs installed moves forward you know we, we once this goes into effect and everybody knows how it's going to work uh we should be able to address some of those yeah Thank you, David. Quick question, Colin, to add on that. So if it's inoperable and if it's not licensed, they can not actually take off and drive off, right? At that point, it has to be impounded. I'm Correct. Assuming. Yeah. And if by inoperable, that means it's missing a wheel, it's missing a windshield, it's missing an engine. Uh, these are the kind of things that, that are going to be able to be impounded uh, with or without any sort of restricted parking sign. Because the LAPD doesn't have to, when, it, when LAPD shows up and they just, they can't just take off, especially. They can't. They, they can't. Yeah. I mean, unless, well, I mean, again, there's going to be like a warning system, you know, it's probably, I'm, I'm assuming, and I could be wrong, uh, that it's going to be like a three strikes you're out kind of thing. You know, they're going to get three warnings after the first warning, LASA will get involved and go perform outreach and, you know, don't hold me to it. I'm not sure that it's three visits, but that's, you know, that makes sense to me. Right. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Well, vehicles in general, too, they have to be 181 days expired before they'll tow. Uh, so they can be expired by two or three months. They generally won't remove those vehicles under state law. It's pretty much 100. It's six months plus a day, so 181 days. But some of these have moved in two years, so hopefully it shouldn't be an issue. And the sure. one on uh, Rinaldi at Wilbur, um, that has the signage for not parking overnight. So that's yeah. a straight yeah. good move, move in the right direction already. Thanks yeah. again, Colin. Absolutely. Thank you. I have uh, Patty. Uh, has her hand up. Patty, floor is yours. Thank you. Um, and I want to thank the PRNC for quickly sending out that letter support for Henry Stern's bill to close down LISO. And uh, I sent off an email to John Lee uh, the other day uh, asking for a resolution for the city council to do the same thing, support the closing down through SP 1486. And I mentioned it at uh, previous, either this council or Northridge West um, to Matt Hernandez. And uh, I haven't seen anything on the agenda. So he really needs to do it, but he needs to do it quickly. Get, get something out because um, uh, April 25th is the first committee meeting. Um, and again, it, any of us can call in and support it, but it's very important city council supports it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll certainly bring that up with our legislative team. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Any other uh, questions? I see Ruth has her hand up. One second, please. Floor is yours. Hi, I wasn't sure if this was appropriate time. I'm a congressional candidate and 
Is is this the right time or is it later? No, not yet. That's in public comments, which is the, uh, I believe, two items down. Okay. Oh, wait. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Any other hands? I don't see any more hands. You got it quick and easy again, Colin, this time. Again. We'll see. We'll see. The meeting is young. <laughs> That's very, very true. <laughs> thank all you all right. so much. Thank you. Hang tight. And we'll see you in a bit. Uh, next, I have Garrett. Uh, let me bring him in. Jarrett? I'm not sure where he went. Bottom man. I do see John. Oh, there you are. I see John and Michelle Hales has a question for Colin. Colin, are you still here? I am. I, I am. Okay. Well, let, me, let me allow them to talk real quick. I think they have a question for you. The floor is yours, John and Michelle Hales. Thank you. Appreciate that. That's a quick question. Um, Throughout this past couple months, we've seen more and more of those RVs parked all over the place. And somebody asked me a funny question and I wanted to share it with you. If these people are homeless and they don't have a lot of money, how in the world can they afford an RV? So I asked that to a policeman this past week and he'll remain nameless because he didn't want the name fit around. But there are RVs being leased out for $50 a month. These are all RVs that have been towed, put away, are sitting useless, if you will. They, will. they were towing them to locations even though they won't work. So that was something that completely surprised me and I wanted to see if Colin had heard that. Thank you. Uh, yes, I absolutely have heard that. That absolutely is going on. Uh, and I have also heard of RVs being uh, inoperable RVs being towed to locations and dropped off for such a purpose. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that definitely happens. And, you know, when these things are impounded, if they are deemed able to be able to resell, you know, they resell at low, you know, at a very low cost. And so somebody can come in, a disreputable person can come in and buy it and do exactly what, uh, you know, what you just suggested. That is, that is, that is an issue. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's confirmation. Thank you. All right, let's bring in Garrett back in. One second. Promote the panelists. There you are. Jared, can you hear us? Can anybody hear me? Yes, yes. Excellent. Can. Thank you guys very much for having me. I appreciate the, the chance to speak here. Um, so I'm uh, filling in for Matt Rogers. I believe he's normally on these for uh, Congressman Garcia's office. Uh, he's you. out on paternity leave right now uh, with their second child. So uh, congratulations to him. And I'll be uh, giving a brief update uh, from the Congressman's office. So thank you again for having me. Uh, so this past weekend, uh, Representative Garcia joined a, a bipartisan delegation of lawmakers to travel to Poland to meet with the United States Armed Forces and allied partners in the region. While in Warsaw, the congressman met with the Prime Minister of Poland, the Defense Minister of Poland, and the U.S. Ambassador to Poland. Uh, he also visited with Ukrainian officials, Ukrainian refugees, and American soldiers in the U.S. Army. Uh, the Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy, appointed the congressman to serve on the bicameral conference committee uh, to negotiate legislation legislation to combat China and increase American competitiveness. Uh, a couple notable bills to mention here. Uh, the congressman was a yes vote uh, for the fiscal year 2022 omnibus spending bill, a bill which funded the government, brings billions of dollars in funding to California's 25th district and increases our military's budget. He was also a yes vote on the uh, suspending energy imports from Russia Act. Uh, which suspends the import of Russia of, of oil, uh, natural gas from Russia, and in, in an effort to further sanction uh, their economy for the invasion of Ukraine. Um, and then there's a couple bills that were introduced. Uh, there was the No Timber from Tyrants Act, 
uh, which would ban the imports of wood products from Russia and Belarus and direct the, U the U.S. Forest Services uh, and the Department of the Interior to harvest more timber from federal lands to compensate for the banned imports. And then there was H.R. 7241, uh, which was a bill that would uh, reauthorize funding for the Mental Health Block Grant program that is administered by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. And then there was also, uh, the congressman also signed on to a letter uh, to Governor Gavin Newsom, urging him to suspend the gas tax in California to reduce prices at the pump. Uh, the congressman uh, recognizes that America's national security and energy go hand in hand. If we want America to remain safe, secure, and prosperous, our adversaries, um, as our adversaries become more brazen, we must return our country to energy independence, uh, which the congressman is actively pushing for. And uh, the the congressman secured almost $10 million uh, in community project funding for local priorities uh, with the fiscal year 2022 appropriations package. The funding will help prevent wildfires, support law enforcement, fund the defense sector, enhance school security, improve local education, advance local health care technologies, boost access to local health care facilities, provide techno technological advancements in space exploration, increase safety, uh, reduce traffic, and much more within California's 25th district. And uh, to add on a few more, a few more th items here. Um, the uh, as far as funding goes, uh, we're looking toward the next round of funding for fiscal year of 23. The appropriations package should be done by September 30th. Um, ad the congressman's advocating for as many resources for the district as he can. Uh, if anyone has any funding requests uh, or questions, please feel free to reach out to our Washington DC team. Um, that, that phone number and uh, email addresses can be found on, on the congressman's website, which is mikegarcia.house.gov. Uh, the spending bills should drop by early summer um, and the congressman continues to monitor and receive classified brief briefings about Ukraine and China. Um, there is also the uh, you know, we're at, the congressman is waiting for um, Speaker Nancy Pelosi uh, to see who is named to serve as conferees uh, for the China Competes Act. The congressman serves on the key committee and many, uh, the congressman serves on the key committee and may be selected for this. Uh, the congressman is focused on ensuring that there is more to address in China's competitiveness and bring accountability. Um, focusing, he's focusing on domestic production of goods to help with America's competitiveness and China's theft of business IPs or intellectual properties. Uh, there's also the Artemis program that was through uh, NASA. Uh, they will be launching in mid-June. This will be the first flight uh, to be unmanned. And uh, once this first flight is complete, uh, they will reassess and make any changes prior to releasing um, when the first manned flight uh, will be back to the moon. And then um, uh, as far as the few items in the district that are going on right now, we have the art competition uh, commencing within the congressman's office. Um, and he's announced that he will be participating in this and it is open. We are open and accepting uh, submissions through April 28th. Uh, this is for all high schoolers uh, that are within the district and they're able to submit an entry uh, and more information on this can be found on the Congressman's website. And then there's the uh, taxpayers problem solving problem solving day uh, that is tentatively set for Saturday, June 18th. We will be bringing out representatives from the taxpayer advocates and IRS uh, to address any tax issues someone may have. Uh, all that is required is for people to reach out to our office and make an appointment. Uh, the best office to reach out to would be our Santa Clarita office, again, found on the website. And uh, then we've got some roundtables and town halls. The congressman will be starting a series of community-focused roundtables uh, and, uh, and various topics that we'll be planning to roll out in the next series of town halls that the congressman will have within the district. Uh, more information on that will be to follow. Um, and then uh, any outreach, the congressman's office will be starting mobile office hours uh, where we will be at different locations to help better provide service to the people's doorsteps, for, especially for those that have any difficulty reaching our office. So uh, I think that's about it for my update and uh, I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank, Thank you. you, Garrett. Any board members have questions? No questions. Any attendees? Assad, floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, yes, hi, Garrett. A quick question. The congressman yes. was working on the SALT, the state and local tax deduction allowance, you know, where right. your property tax limitation, is there any update on that? 
Please. You know, I haven't I haven't been uh, provided with any specific update on that one, but I'd be happy to give you uh, contact information. Our Washington DC office would have the most up to date information on that as they do handle uh, the legislation side of things. And let me, uh, let me get you that phone number. Um, Real quick here. No, I, I have I have your con all your contacts. I just oh okay. Well, then yeah, I just wanted to ask it in the office. public yeah, forum. I just yeah. haven't received anything specific on that as of right yet. Okay. So, but thank you for the question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Asad. I have John and Michelle Hills again. Uh, floor is yours. Thank you. Um, a quick question. Um, sure. I I came out of the medical industry. Um, 30, 35 years ago, state of California closed several mental institutions, state mental institutions, um, released all those people to fend for themselves. Now, over this past 35 years, we run into the situations like we have now where there is a huge need uh, for support for these people. Um, one issue at hand right now that's going on is that it appears that because of that, we're losing control of these people. A, a large portion of them end up on the streets. Um, they don't want help because they don't see that they need it. But the real question is this, right now, in addition to this separate path, uh, Kaiser Permanente um, has just started to reduce the support for mentally ill people. They used to have programs that ran on and on and on until you felt comfortable enough and strong enough to move on. But they're starting to pull away and close up support for these people. So at the state level, are we doing anything? Or federal. Or federal. Uh, is there anything being done for these people um, to bring, if you will, crutches to these folks that need them or to the city or the county or whoever? Um, to provide the support they really, really need. Thank you. Right. No, that's an excellent question. Um, and I think as far as the federal level is concerned um, with, with what's being done uh, regarding, you know, the mental health, as you were, you were uh, mentioning there, uh, it would be HR 7241. Um, and again, that's the bill that reauthorizes the funding for mental health block grants. Um, it's a program that's administered by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Um, so that'll be something to keep, keep an eye on uh, as that uh, develops further. Um, I do believe it's it's um, it was just introduced, so it's in a, in more of the infancy stages, um, uh, and votes for that should be coming up. Um, I don't I don't have exact dates on when that will be, but um, but again, it's HR seventy two forty one to keep an eye on that. As far as state um, any state. Um, engagement would go for that, uh, and that would be reaching out to uh, your. Uh, uh, California State Assembly Members Office, as well as the California State Senators' Offices, um, to see what what um, what bills might be on that level. I'm I'm just uh, I'm a little more focused on the the federal level with uh, with the Congressman's Office right now. But um, but yeah, again, uh, 7241 is the one to keep an eye on that. So I hope hope that kind of helps uh, lead lead you to some answers on that. That that is a little bit of a glimpse of positivity. Appreciate it. Excellent. That. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions? With no further questions, thank you for coming. I appreciate oh, all the updates. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. I really thank appreciate you. being here. Thank you thank very you. much. Let's move on. I see Tessa with her hand up. Let's bring her in. All right, Tessa, the floor is yours when you come on. Welcome. We can't hear you. Hello. You sound you sound like a robot at the moment of time. And you're frozen. Can you hear us or see us? No.
No, she is. I oh. can hear you. You. No, you're very choppy, and we don't understand a word. And she dropped off. All right, let's move on. I think Diane is here uh, from Suzette's office. Let me see if she has to add anything, and we'll come back to Tessa. Diana, the floor is yours if you have anything to add. Yeah, so hello everyone. Thanks for having me. It was great meeting some of you last week at the Chatsworth Block Fest. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Diana and I'm your field rep from the Office of Assemblywoman Suzette Valadares. Most of you are familiar with Anthony and we share some of the neighborhood council meetings, so you would either see me or him on this one. So anyways, I just have a brief legislative update on what's going on in the district and the capital. The Assemblywoman's legislative package is fully introduced and she has various bills addressing different areas. She has a bill that would limit the liability of nonprofits and churches that offer housing and other services to the homeless. There is another one that would create tax credits for businesses that allow employees to telecommute. She does have a few um, school bills. Um, one of them is a school safety bill that would incentivize schools to adopt anonymous reporting systems for threats of violence. These reporting systems have helped drastically reduce school shootings, suicides, and bullying in the states that have adopted them. She has a food allergy bill that would require the Department of Education to create a document guiding school districts in the best practices for preparing food. Um, gas tax is a hot topic right now. The Assemblywoman has been voting in support of temporarily halting the gas tax for six months to help ease some of the costs. However, it isn't passing. And then just a reminder that the district office is here to help you guys in any way. We've been getting a lot of calls about people having trouble with the housing department, especially since the rent relief applications have been closed. We do have liaisons in all of the state agencies that we can reach out to for any issues that you guys may be having. The Assemblywoman wants us out in the field to see what's happening in the district and what we can do to help. So we'd love feedback from community leaders like yourselves. So yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you, Diana. Uh, any panelists, any questions, board members? Oh. It was great meeting you, Diana, at the, yeah. the event. You did a great job. Thank you. Look forward to working with you in the future. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Any attendees? No, you got it very easy as well today, Diana. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again uh, for the updates. And are you, if you're you're more than welcome to stay for the whole meeting, or yeah, I'll be around. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let's see if Tessa's back. She is not back yet. I guess we could come back to her uh, if she comes back. Let's go on to the next one, which is public comments. And the floor is yours for any candidates or public comments, please raise your hand. Any public comments? Oh, there's Tessa. Tessa's back. All right, one second. Okay, right. there you go. Much better. I'm on my personal computer. I don't know what it is. My work computer's not working. Okay. Right. So, am I okay? I'm not a robot. You're good. Okay, good. Um, so I wanted to share with you that um, just a few minutes before the meeting started, we got a revised health officer order. And as of today, what this does is it removes quarantine requirements for asymptomatic people who've been exposed to people um, who have COVID-19. So you're, um, you're exposed to someone, right? But you don't have symptoms and you tested negative you don't have to wear a mask or quarantine. That's only for the general public. There are certain um, jobs in which you still have to wear a mask and you still have to quarantine, but not for most of us. Um, today, there were 973 new positive cases and 11 new deaths. We're definitely doing uh, much better, but cases are on the rise. Um, I'm sure all of you, like me, have been going out and doing more and be hearing about events. We're attending events all the time now. 
Um, but, you know, continue to be vigilant. Um, and uh, there's no shame in continuing to wear a mask and to get boosted again. Um, on homelessness, um, I, I am not aware of any uh, efforts taking place in, uh, you know, to build interim housing in Porter Ranch, but I do know that there are several sites throughout the third district that are um, under, uh, you know, being considered, you know, they're seeking funding, some are in West LA, some are in the East Valley. There's one in the West Valley in Woodland Hills called the 818. You may have heard of it. We don't know if there's funding yet for it. It would be um, interim supportive housing for families. Someone asked the question about mental health. Um, all of these housing sites that we build, whether it's bridge housing or um, you know, usually there's uh, city money involved, um, or city is is um, involved in organizing and coordinating, sending spending some money, but a lot of the money also comes from the state. Um, uh, but in every facility that that we work on, there is uh, mental health services and um, you know just supportive case management services to make sure that people have. Uh, you know, they're not just, um, you know, receiving a bed and no support, because we know that that's really critical. Um, and we don't know yet, as I said, about the 818 Hotel. Um, hopefully we'll find out soon. Another thing I wanted to mention, it's also not in Porter Ranch, but it's in the West Valley, and that is efforts to uh, really revitalize the LA River. We're going to see the Ev LA River Master Plan, I thought it was going to be reintroduced to the Board of Supervisors in March, I think, or in April. It may be in May. Um, but there is an effort underway at the Headwaters, which is in Canoga Park. You know, the start of the LA River is in Canoga Park. And it doesn't, how far is it from you all in Porter Ranch? It's probably quite a ways away. But still. Canoga Park is about 10 minutes from us. All right, there you go. So there's going to be this beautiful pavilion. Um, you know, which is like a real convening place for folks with, um, you know, art, actually Frank Geary, you know, the architect Frank Geary is helping to design it. And there's going to be beautiful art there and, um, you know, places for, pe for people to convene. There'll be bathrooms and drinking fountain and shade because we know it gets very hot in the valley. Um, so there will be an open house and public, um, you know, discussion about this, uh, as well as input that we're requesting from community on another art piece that'll be um, associated with that facility. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention, for those of you who are part of the Granada Hills community, you probably have heard this and I apologize. This is something that I know that the board is really proud of. Um, Supervisor Kuehl authored a motion to reduce waste from single use plastics and styrofoam. Um, this is only unincorporated LA County. So this does not include your city, but it could be that cities in, in you know, communities in LA um, and, and other cities will be inspired and do something similar. So the goal here is for restaurants to um, cease use of disposable foodware, um, meaning plastics, well, uh, plastic based foodware. So if you're gonna provide um, uh, single use plastic, uh, single use utensils, they need to be compostable. Um, and if you are serving indoors, or if you're serving uh, a at a restaurant where people are dining in, um, then you you use washable, reusable um, products. The goal is to uh, reduce waste um, and encourage, um, you mean, ideally encourage people to, uh, you know, I suppose if we get takeout, right, just not take um, utensils at all. Um, so there's a year to for this to be enacted. It'll be effective May 2023. And there will be supports for restaurants um, so that, uh, you know, they, they understand how to be in compliance. There may be um, a need for them to get financial support. So that is going to be under consideration as well. Um, and that is all for me for now. Thank you, Tessa. I got Becky. Becky, you have a question? I, I would, yeah, I, I do. Um, uh, thank you for uh, joining us, Tessa. Uh, the question is, where is the facility that you're going to put the mural? Where exactly is it located? 
you're talking about a mural or were you earlier well, so frank Geary's design will be um actually so there's two art projects there's one that's um actually a part of the um the pavilion there's going to be some Where, where's the pavilion oh it's going to be in <laughs> it's going to be in canoga park um at the river right oh, at the well, where's the river is it sherman way is it sherman way i mean what are the streets so it's right next to canoga park high school this is going to be oh, alabama, okay i think i think it's alabama street so they're going to do it on i'm very familiar right, actually at the river like right at the river uh, okay so, like below canoga where the wash is it's Are they going to do it on the, the Wash? Lake river. I mean, it's, well, so I know the river, the Owens yeah. River. It goes all the way um, down to Long Beach. <laughs> this well, is yeah. the this is the headwaters. This is right where it begins at Canoga Park High School. So imagine Canoga Park High School. I went to school there. I can't you imagine did? where they're going to put it. Oh yeah, I did. I, I don't know cool. where they're going to put it. That's what it's going to be like a block past. Like I know Alabama. where Alabama is, but I'll I'll figure it out. Yeah, happy, you know, when we have the open house, I would love to have you all come. So the art piece is gonna be a, like a great that um, Geary is gonna design over the pavilion. And then the art piece, it could be a mural, it could be tile work, we really don't know. And that's where we need community in, input and involvement. To Thank decide you. what it's gonna be, sure. Thank you. Any more uh, questions, comments from the board? Attendees, with no further questions, thank you, Tessa, for coming and all the updates. And yeah, just send us an email whenever there are any updates, and uh, we can we'll be glad to be there. Wonderful, well done. I appreciate it. Thank you again. All right, let's move on to public comments. Anyone want to make a public comment? I believe there was Ruth that wanted to make a public comment. Then, uh, then go ahead. One second. All right, Glenn. Floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the general public comment, right? Yes. Okay. You've already done budget advocate report, Brian. Did Brian yet, do? That's next. Okay. Um. All right, so uh, two comments. Number one, Valley Alliance of Neighborhood Councils meeting tomorrow night, uh, State Superintendent of Public Instructions, the guest speaker, plus a lot of other items on the agenda. We'll get to as many as we can. The other thing I just wanted to mention is there are a few of us, the city clerk has established a work group for the upcoming Neighborhood Council 2023 elections. And I just wanted you all to know that I'm one of those members on the panel. Um, we, they, they've started their meetings. They are only going to have, I think a total of five, but they're looking at the different aspects uh, of it. And I just want to give you a quick update. You might want to agendize it for your next meeting. Um, uh, but number one, uh, the, in terms of timeline in the Valley used to be the first four, and then it was the second four. And now under this new timeline, we will be the last four. And they're also looking at three options for voting in person, um, all in person, or all vote by mail, or a hybrid of the two. And for an in person or a hybrid, the schedule would be for the month of June that we would have, but June of 2023, um, that the uh, four Valley regions would be scheduled. Um, and Region 2, which Porter Ranch is in, would be the, you know, it'd be the second of those four. So probably like early June. And for vote by mail, that would be scheduled during the month of May, if that's the option selected. Also, I just wanted to give you a heads up that the city clerk, our, the, our working group has urged them to uh, send out a survey to neighbor councils to get their feedback regarding these options. So um, I'm not sure it could appear any day now. So keep your eyes open for that. Um, you know, and certainly respond to ASAP. They're also going to do their uh, election information worksheet as they do every two years. Uh, they said that that would be going out around June. So watch for that. That's where you select your preferred polling place and also the hours for the voting and also for uh, any translation 
languages for you know materials etc so um and that will have a deadline the end of july so hopefully they'll get it to you early enough so you can put it on your june agenda if not then it would have to be i guess july in order to make that deadline all right i probably used up my time um yeah so you might want to put the 2023 elections on uh, upcoming agenda because there may be that there likely will be further information uh if not from the working group from city clerk officially thank you sounds good thank you glenn One second. All right, next is uh, Ruth. One second. All righty, the floor is yours. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity. My name is Ruth Lovanos. I'm a teacher. I'm running for Congress in California's 27th Congressional District, which includes Porter Ranch, Granada Hills, Santa Clarita Valley, Castaic, Acton Agua Dulce, and the Antelope Valley. I have been a public school teacher in LA Unified for over 22 years. I'm currently a uh, teacher at John R. Wooden High School. It's a continuation high school down the street from Cleveland High School, if you know where that is, or down the street from CSUN. And um, I'm running for Congress because we need someone, <laughs> we need someone who understands what it's like to work two jobs, who lives in a three generation household, who knows the everyday struggles that we're, we're dealing with. I have actively fought for the shut, shut down of the Lisa Canyon gas facility because I know the impact that it has had on the Porter Ranch community and the Granada Hills community and, and Canoga Park. I'm also, uh, have been advocating for years for the shutdown, for the, I'm sorry, full cleanup of the Santa Zana Field Lab, which also impacts lots of uh, people in Porter Ranch, Canoga Park, Chatsworth, West Hills. Um, I myself, I'm a cancer survivor, so I know the importance of making sure we have healthcare for all, making sure that we have environmental justice, making sure that we have housing, making sure that we address the issues that are impacting our families every single day. And so that's why I'm running for Congress. I encourage you to go to my website. If you wanna find out more about me, it's um, Ruth for the number four, congress.com. And you can find out more about my campaign and uh, why we need one of us in Congress in Washington, DC, fighting for working families. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you, Ruth. All righty, any more comments? With no further comments, let's move on. Next item is uh, budget advocates. Please raise your hand if you're representing them. Budget advocates. Glenn, are you gonna do it? Let me bring Glenn in just in case. Glenn, you wanna add anything on uh, budget advocates? Uh, I apologize, I'm doing double duty tonight. All right. um, so I'm sure what, what all we covered. So I guess I'd better, uh, I'd be happy to answer questions you know, that need to be answered. Okay, are there any uh, questions? No questions. Okay, if uh, the the re if it wasn't mentioned, the recording of the controllers town hall, um, if it's not already posted on the website, it will be in the next day or so. Perfect. Thank you, Glenn. Yeah. All right, let's move on for CAG updates. CAG up CAG uh, members will not be here today, so they gave me a paragraph to read real quick, and here it goes. DPH finally published the long-awaited CBC study on a blood, blood test conducted on members of the Port Ranch community. CAG has some significant concerns related to the study and the conclusion it draws. Dr. Nordella has done a complete write-up and PRNC may wish to set up a time next, next month to go over the report with the community. Additionally, CAG has continued meeting with Supervisor Kuehl's office and about the health study. And our community recently heard more about the fence line monitoring system that was being put in place. 
That's all they sent me. That's all I got to read. And I will have them on the agenda next month for more updates. Next item is uh, treasurer's reports. And our treasurer is not here today. And uh, to my understanding, we have approximately $19,000 uh, to spend for this fiscal year. And I believe we can transfer over possibly up to $10,000 for next year if we don't use it. Gabriel, okay, David yes. Allen here. Yes, David. Um, why don't I shoot you, uh, let me shoot you over um, uh, a screenshot of the money that we have, or I can read it off to you. I'll pull it up on the computer right now. Go for it. You want, and we you can, can come back and we can come, and we can come back to it just to give everybody an update. Okay. I'll tell you okay. what we have. Give me a second. Go on to the next item and I'll come back to it. Thanks. All right. Uh, next item is also getting tabled, which is uh, the MER because our treasurer is not here. Make a note. Following item is discussion and possible action uh, for Nobel MPG. Uh, Hilda, go for it. Hi, everyone. So Be I don't know where Becky went, but she's not here. Let me see um, if she's in the waiting room. I think she got kicked off, she said, or something. OK, can we She'll bring her on? Seconds. She's yeah. not here yet. Oh, she's, I can see her at, as an attendee. You can do it? I don't see her as an attendee. Yeah, she's there. There's all the way in the bottom. I got her. You got her? Yes. Okay, perfect. Mikey, welcome back. Oh, good. Okay, maybe she can hear us. Can you hear us? There Becky? you go. Okay, there. Okay, great. Okay, so Becky's on. Um, Becky and I met, uh, we went and um, to Nobel Charter Middle School um, last few weeks ago. We, will, we were very well welcomed. Um, what we're trying to do is uh, we want to pass, um, are we passing a motion? Or you no? read the, yeah, read the motion if you want. Okay, it says here discussion on possible action to approve Nobel NPG for an amount of up to 30, um, $1,300 to rebuild the parent center at Nobel. Um, I so, yeah, perfect. Are there any representatives from LAUSD or Nobel here? Please I, raise your hand. There yeah, Ellen is here. Perfect, let me bring her in. There you go. Perfect. Go ahead, Ellen. Ellen. How are you, Ellen? Hi, Ellen. We can't hear you. She has to unmute herself. There Thank you go. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Here I am. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, perfect. Hello. Thank you for having me. Perfect. Yes, um, it was a pleasure to meet with you ladies. Um, we are trying to rebuild the parent center. We showed them the uh, metal cabinets, the dirt, the grime. Um, the parent center, um, don't let the name distract you. It is a full blown community center. It's not just the parents and the school. It is a community center. And um, before COVID, of course, we had um, voting there we had the blood drives donations. We had um, CPR classes. We had free yoga classes and um, events on entrepreneurs led by the California Council on Economic Education. So moving forward, they have been approved to do another blood donation drive at the end of May. So hopefully that will um, still be able to go. Um, and the space also provides a wide variety of res resources, you know, for public health, school based clinics, known as CHAMP or health insurance or CalFresh. Um, so in the, the old life, it was a home economics class in the 60s. So there's like five sinks 
that do not work. Um, so going forward, we want to cap the sinks. We want to um, clear the metal cabinets. We want to put drywall. We want to um, paint. We might have to prime um, and just clean up the area. So it's good for um, the purposes it needs for now. And um, I know um, Hilda and Rebecca saw the cabinets and you open it, it's all rusty. Um, it looks terrible. <laughs> and and uh, uh, Ellen, yeah. you wanna add, you wanna add what you, you guys um, talked about, about the kids. Uh, most important, the kids that uh, during recess, during lunchtime, they cannot interact with a big group of people. So they come to this room and they play with each other with another person or maybe a possible teacher or volunteer parent. And I think that was very important. And maybe you, you want to talk about that? Yes. So if they have no place else to go, the students on campus? Yes. Of course, they're always welcome at the parent center. That's what I was told yes. by uh, the other person was her name, Yvette. That's what she was mentioning. Yeah. yeah, she was mentioning that if kids, uh, some of our kids are shy or they don't want to interact with other kids or they can't. So they're only on one on one. So they have board games there just to spend the time uh, until they go to their next class. Right. And I think that's very important. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Yeah. Ellen, quick question for you. Uh, has any other uh, neighborhood council uh, funded this MPG or, and if so, what amount? Yes. So when I filled out the application, North Ridge West gave us $2,000. Okay. And what is the total price for the project? The total price is 2000 plus the 13, hopefully we're getting um, from you guys. So it's 3,300. No, but what is the total cost of the actual project? 3,300. That is 3,300. Oh, yes. Got it. The rebuild. Thank you. Uh, David, last year, you have a question? The floor is yours. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we support, you know, the Porter Ranch uh, Community School. We support Castle Bay predominantly because they're within our neighborhood council. Um, I think it's somewhat remarkable that Chadsworth, uh, which is where this was located, uh, to my understanding, unless it is Northridge West, hasn't hasn't donated money. That's a little bit odd. Um, and we are frequently, uh, repeatedly have uh, been called upon and have donated to Castle Bay and Port Ranch Community School. And I just like to keep uh, it's, you know, it's only $1,300, but at the same time, that's $1,300 for our district uh, and not outside of it. Um, otherwise, also, how much how much time are the parents of uh, Nobel? I mean, if that was my school, if they said, hey, come spend a Saturday ripping cabinets off the wall, I'd be there myself. How much time are parents, uh, have they donated to start working on this as well? No, no, it, this has to be done by contractors. Um, this is a very big job. Then how are you gonna do it for $3,300? It seems like you backed into a number. That's very strange that it's such a big job that you can do all of it for $3,300. No, we're doing it in phases. So phase one is taking down the metal cabinets capping the plumbing and then um, putting the drywall and then painting. And is this in Northridge West or is it in Chadsworth? I believe it's Northridge. Okay. This is in Northridge, California. And no, no, is it within Northridge West Neighborhood Council or Chadsworth Neighborhood Council? It's, I was looking on the map, it seems to be right on the line. No, we're not, we're in Northridge West. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, and also there's quite a few um, students from your Porter Ranch community that go to Novell. Quite and, a few. And plenty from Northridge West go to Castle Bay and Porter Ranch. So right. I don't know how much how much Northridge West or Chadsworth has supported Porter Ranch Community School or Chadsworth in the past. Or Chastle Bay or Porter Ranch. I'm not understanding what you're asking. Well, it works the same way. If you expect us to support an out-of-district school, I would expect Northridge West and Chadsworth neighborhood councils to support Porter Ranch Community School and Castle Bay. And I don't know how much that has happened in the past. I have nothing to do with those. Oh, I understand. Okay, I am here asking for help for Nobel Charter Middle School for PTSA. I understand. Thank you. All right, thank you, David. Yes, Becky, yes. you want to add something to that? And I'll go to David Bailen after. 
Yeah, I sure did. Um, Porter Ranch Kids, uh, that's our school. It is uh, geographically not located in Porter Ranch proper, but our children go to school there. They go to Granada, they go to Chatsworth, and, um, and that's why we felt it was important to make a donation to a school that the Porter Ranch children go to. We're not lucky enough you know, to have a middle school in Porter Ranch. We have the component at PRCS, but we don't have a middle school or a high school. And we feel that the children, you know, in Porter Ranch who attend those schools should be supported. And it's not vice versa. So thank you. Thank you. David Bellin, floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, I've been a longtime advocate in uh, raising funds for the schools. I raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for Porter Ranch Community School. Um, but you know what, we've always had the parents assist as well as uh, LAUSD. So my question to you is how much money are you getting from the parents? Because that's a big school, big, big school, twice as big as PRCS, twice as big as Castle Bay. Um, so how much, how much funds have you raised from the parents? And also um, how much are you getting from LAUSD? Thank we you. Are not getting, we are not getting anything from LAUSD. But this is their property, they own this. Oh, okay. Their funds do not go for um, rebuilding a parent center. The budget for the parent center does not have the funds to do a total complete um, rebuild. But I do know that they can fix the, the wash basins. They can fix, I mean, just by going on to their website, it, you can file, you can file a claims and have all these repairs made at any time. No. So I'm just kind of understanding no, you know, it's not we, we're not in the position. Let me finish, please. The Porter Ranch Neighbor Council is not in the position of rehabbing, play, just rehabbing facilities. We're here to raise funds for the children. And I get it. It's a parent center, but the children hang out there. Um, but I'm just trying to understand how much money has been raised by the parents. Thank you. So there's in two phases. The first phase, we would like to use the grants to um, get a clean slate. The second phase is where the parents come in and then we have the nest, which is a direct donation that goes straight to our goal. And our goal is rebuilding the parent center for the second phase, which is putting in a kitchenette, putting in cabinets, putting in um, a display area. Thank you. Uh, I want to add something. Um, I want to add what? something. So, um, so we're basically, it's not like we're remodeling, we're cleaning up. And I think it's very important for our kids. Uh, Porter Ranch kids go there. My daughter went there. My nephew went there. I have my girlfriend's daughter went there in the past. But you know what, in order for these kids to go to a clean for room not rusted and damaged and um it's important for these kids to have a nice clean room just like any other school that's how i feel you know and i really uh, appreciate everyone voting on this it's only thirteen hundred dollars we could do it thank you thank you becky um the uh I, I thought it was a really worthwhile project we met with the principal we met with the vice principal um they explained everything um this is the first step in in reba and it, it's so important because castle bay sandy dorfman uh spearheaded putting a, a buddy bunch at castle bay and that room is used kind of as a buddy room uh for the kids who can't make friends easily they know they can go to that room it's a safe room and um it is in such disrepair and and i and uh, I think it's really important that we support this. The other thing is, Ellen, could you uh, tell uh, the board um, what kind of um, notor not notoriety that it'll what would will you put our name in the room saying that we donate that we participated in do the donation? Um, how will we be acknowledged, and how will the community know that we participated for our children who go to school there? Oh yes. So we have all the media social sites. And actually you could see the pictures on our Instagram of the parents center. 
because we are doing that direct donation for the nest. And then, um, so there's gonna be a couple of, so Northridge West gave us, you know, the 2000. So what we're planning on doing is um, doing everything on social media. We do PA announcements in the school. And then we're also going to do a grand ribbon cutting after that first primary sub project is done. So after the completion of that, the entities that gave grants will be um, send a representative or representatives for a ribbon cutting. And of course the date and time is to be determined, but most probably the next school year. Thank you. Uh, I got two more board questions and I got a couple on attendees. Uh, David Balin. Going back. Um, so I agree. We, you know, we've always supported Castle Bay. We, Castle Bay, when they have their run, um, we supported a run that never happened. So there was money. I'd like to know whatever happened to that money that we well, supported. That's not what this is about. No, 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 no. Let me finish, Becky. Thank you. Point of order. Um, I know, I'm no, sorry. but I'm getting, thank you. What I'm getting at is I, I like to see parents contribute. I really do. It's very important for me because I, I know parents can contribute. I don't care if every parent contributed $1 out of that school, um, you would end up having $2,000. Um, I, I, for, for me personally, I think that the board should uh, support at least a $500 donation. I don't feel that there's a $1,300 donation um, value for, for this school because there's no contribution coming from the parents. Why does it have to be the neighborhood council when the parents don't care about their school? Thank you. Thank you, David. David Lasser? Yeah, I echo what David said. I mean, sweat equity is important here. I don't know how much, if he, it's remarkable saying that the room is dirty and filthy. Where are the parents with the broom? I know I was called upon to do that and volunteer at Castle Bay and give money. Um, we have about 90 to 100 kids who go to Castle Bay Lane Elementary School that are not within Porter Ranch uh, neighborhood council area. And uh, I don't know if uh, we've ever asked, if Castle Bay has ever been asked uh, Northridge West to contribute to them or Chadsworth and, and the like. So good for the goose, good for the gander. But yeah, I, I agree with David. It's like, they're not in the district. What are the parents doing? And the website, by the way, says nothing about kids. It says the parents' room is a parents' club site. So read it two seconds ago. Well, read the website. I just looked at it. I could read for you verbatim what it says. It says that the parent center is a parent's room uh, and, and the like. It says nothing about sharing it with kids and the like. But, uh, you know, okay. th there is a point in time where the parents could have or should have, um, you I'm, know, the parent I'm, center is a parent I'm, classroom, a place where I'm, parents can learn about curriculum, community resources, so on and so forth. I'm looking right at it. But right. I pre yeah. part of it. That is one part of it. There's a whole other part of it. She can't put everything on the website. But you know, I appreciate it. It's a you know, it's a not a it's a good cause, but you know, again, not our district. I agree with David, but thank you very much. Thank I you. don't know why you keep saying it's not your district when a lot of your uh, the children of your area go to Nobel. Also, um it is not just a broom job, which we do have beautification day on campus, but outside. This is a contractor. It needs to be safe and done with permits. This is metal cabinets. I don't know, Hilda and Rebecca, you saw them. These are heavy metal cabinets from the 1960s. And I, I'm shocked to Dave's point as well. I mean, LESD, it, how they're going to let the pri a public pay for a contractor to come in and work. First off, they're gonna have to be a union contractor because no non-union works gonna step foot on any LUS to school and do work. And no union contract is gonna come on and remove cabinets and I'll do this for two grand. That's the, uh, very, very questionable. But if, where's the, you know, LUSD has plenty of funding for infrastructure repair. They've spent millions of dollars on air filters alone because of COVID. They can't remove cabinets from walls. It's I'm very, very interested to hear about that rule. And uh, Davis Bacon, prevailing wages have to be paid on a public campus. Yeah, it's. I'd, I'd also, this is David Bale. I'd also like to see um, LAUSD's uh, release of liability on this. They're never going to let a, a, a contractor on the premises. It's never going to happen. Trust me. We did. We did a, a playground 
at Port Ranch Community School that started out it, it, it started out as a $25,000 project. By the time LAUSD got in there and, and started messing with it, we spent $175,000. That's the playground that's sitting on there. And that's all parents' money. Not one dime came from LAUSD. So um, I, I'm going to be, I find it very hard that LAUSD will let a contractor come on the premises. It's not going to happen. Thank you, David. And thank you, David. Hilda, and let's go to the Yes, I, uh, I want to respond to both Davids. And this is the first attempt. So parents are gonna be involved and this is a phase. There's phase one, two, three, four until it's final. So this is $1,300 to start the project. And I'm sure if the, if the city is not gonna allow it, LA Unified is not gonna allow any contractor which they're gonna be licensed and insured and bonded to come to the school, believe me, the principal, vice principal and the staff will not allow that. So these people are just asking for $1,300. It's a start. And remember, parents will be involved. And again, it's by phase, phase by phase. And don't, don't forget, there's a lot of students that go to that school in our neighborhood, 91326 zip code, go to that school. So I think we should honor it and pass it. Thank you. Thank you, Hilda. Uh, open it up to the public. I got John and Michelle. The floor is yours. Thank you, appreciate that. Thank you. Um, uh, just a quick bit of information. Um, I was a former PTA president, also band parents president over at Granada Hills, now charter. Uh, coming in, the PTSA, the PTA, et cetera, uh, do a, a phenomenal job addressing the child's needs. And it's been said, the problem is that when you're on campus and gonna do work, you folks are absolutely 100% right. LAUSD will not allow you to do that. And in the permit process, that'll come up. But what I'm suggesting is when I went to Granada Hills, they were raising roughly twelve, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 for the band. When I got in there, we upped that to 88,000 per year for three years. What I'm suggesting is that she has a heart, big heart in taking this project on, but I know the parents from those areas, there's a parent in there that uh, has the ability to help you raise money, a lot of money. And it's something that these people are suggesting that you get help from the other parents. They probably do this type of work. My experience is in sales. It didn't take long for us to start having golf tournaments and things like that. But I think what you're hearing is people are a little frustrated. You have an awesome, an awesome project that you wanna get moving. But I think you need one of those parents that have a business acumen that can help you get this done sponsor. as a sponsor. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, Judith, floor is yours. Hi. Um, first of all, um, I wanted to point out that Nobel is on Tampa and um, the Chatsworth Neighborhood Council boundary ends, uh, it, it only goes as far east as the middle of Corbin. So it is not, um, not part of Chatsworth Neighborhood Council. It's Northridge West, 100%. I appreciate and, that. I was looking at the map. It was kind yeah. of ke sketchy, my fault. Thank yeah. you. Um, and um, uh, before you had the community school, 100% of your middle school kids went to school outside of Porter Ranch, just you know, as a point of reference. I wanted to, um, to ask... Um, uh, I, I have a question and a comment, so let me say both of them before um, anybody responds, please. The comment is that um, you you had this um, NPG before you, I don't remember if it was the last fiscal year or it could have been two fiscal years ago, whichever, and it was for like $34,000, I think it was. And the council had a big long debate about giving that much money to Nobel for the same reasons as tonight, which I, I do understand. Um, I'm curious, other than saying phase one and phase two, uh, has, has anything happened 
about the costs that now it's 1300 because even phase one, um, uh, uh, when it was before you before, um, I, I don't believe was as low as $3,300 total. No. Uh, the, the, the other, wait, I, I want to I wanna make the other comment because um, I want to offer another resource in case you haven't tried this. Um, is go directly to Scott Schmerlson. And um, I think it's um, bizarre that the LAUSD has a school with a room on it that has not been remodeled in 40 years or more and was used for uh, a, cl a, a very specific class with very specific needs that has not been used that class hasn't been offered for 40 years or around there. And 100%, it, it should be the responsibility of the LAUSD to clear out that room. I'm not saying that LAUSD should deliver a new parent center to Nobel, but it should be the responsibility of LAUSD to clean that room up and take, take care of the, the plumbing and all the, the outdated uh, stuff that's in there and, and either deliver an empty room and say, you know, let's say you figure out how you wanna fill this empty room or, or otherwise make it safe for 100% um, of the people who are going in there, whether it's teachers, parents, kids, um, the, the public, whatever, but you should go to directly to Scott Schmerlson and say, you know, here's the situation, invite him to come over and look at it and, and get him moving on cleaning up that room first. That's all. Thank Everyone, you. Okay. So to address last fiscal year, yes, we did come and I was new at this. So I took the $34,000 and last year, you told me, not you, but as a whole council told me to go to Northwest first. And instead of doing the 34,000, I phased it out. Okay, so yes, the complete project, which the parents will be helping is 34,000. But to make it so we could get to that end point, we put into like four phases. So what's really important for us right now is to clear out the metal cabinet, put the drywall and have a clean slate. That's what we're asking for right now is a clean slate. So we went to Northwest, they gave us the 2000 and then they even asked me, are you gonna go somewhere else because we want I'll only give you 2000, but we wanna make sure that you'll get the 1300 somewhere else. And I explained to them about what happened last year. So that's why I'm coming to you this year for the 1300. So that's what happened there. Now for the next part, the vice principal Prince will explain to Hilda and Rebecca, if you want me to wait another 20 years, to rebuild this parent center until they have the budget for it. Okay, but we've been trying to do this since sixth grade, since I've been in sixth grade and my kids are um, culminating eighth. So as long as I've been there, they've been trying to get funds, but they just don't have the budget, okay? That's where the PTSA comes in. and the parents and the community and the schools. This is just not one part. This is a whole part. This is now it's even more expensive because contracting got even more. So it might even went up to 50,000. As we wait longer and longer to do this, it's gonna cost, it's gonna go up. Um, so that's, does that answer your questions? I think I remember. That's why I like to do it step by step. Did I answer? So, so you you hit on the points. Um, okay. And and <laughs> and I 
I, and I didn't, I, I did not say, I very carefully did not say go to the school district. I said, go to Scott Smurlson, Becky, hey, oh, you know, oh, right. you know, you know, Scott. And well, if you're talking, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you're talking $30,000 without involving parents, if you're talking about needing $30,000, Scott Schmerlson should should be able to come up with $30,000 somewhere. And I'm, I'm emphasizing, do not go to the school district, go to Scott. And and make sure that that you okay, talk, so that, that you get an audience with him. Okay, so let me explain what he did. He we did go to him first, and what he did was he gave us tables and chairs. Okay, because we didn't have even that. That was a little more important at that point in time to accommodate the things that we needed. And the tables and chairs need to move, you know, for the free yoga classes. So yes, we did go to him first. So what we're trying to do now, and he gave us money to paint the walls. So like I'm explaining, it is a step-by-step -step process. It's taking years. So um, Schmilson painted the world's walls to get the other side paint painted. You know, um, this cabinet that they, that they repainted the cabinets, these old uh, wood cabinets, but they're in good shape. So they painted the walls and those cabinets from the, whole, the old home economics class, and he gave us tables and chairs. So we went there first, and this is like, I think six years ago, okay? So now we're going step by step. So we did go to him. I'm sorry, because sometimes I forget if you answer. So, so that's, we, if we had to go back to him again, yes, we will. But we, he did a phase already. He did a part of it already. This is not something for like the past year or two. This is like been going within 10 years. I mean, it, it just needs at least painting that. And they did a beautiful job that painted the cabinets and the wall in the, in the back. So across from the metal cabinets is a whole wall of storage, I guess where they kept the cooking supplies and, and you know, um, pots and pans. And they did a beautiful job. And it still looks like brand new. That's how well it, they painted. So now, again, step by step, this is not just something that is, is going to be done in a year. This has been taking now, I would say, within 10 years. So we're trying to now go to the next step is the metal cabinets and the sinks. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, I got Assad, and then we'll go to Voss. Assad, floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I echo on what my colleagues here in PRNC saying, which is we should get you something through LAUSD. We all got property tax paid this week. And if you notice, there is a line there. At least each household had paid $1,000 towards LAUSD. So there is an ample of money. Second portion is parents have to contribute. This is their school. When I, my daughters were going to school, I paid and donated a lot and I still do to their schools. So I think it's a situation where the neighborhood council should be the third step. Your first approach is LAUSD, then the parents, then the neighborhood council. That's what I think the formula should be. Thank you. Thank you, Asad. All right, Vas, do you still have a question? Uh, yes, I just want to add that uh, I appreciate what everybody is saying. And uh, as Asad just mentioned that there are some steps and a neighborhood council should come in the third stage. But above all, I would like to say that kids are of all the person, like they are not just going to school from the Northridge, they are going from Porter Ranch also, Northridge come to Porter Ranch. And beside that neighborhood councils are here to help the communities. And we go to the Granada Hill, we go to the Northridge, we go to the Chatsworth. We sometimes we have a common projects where we pitch in for, with each other. So I think if they do not get any money from the other sources, we should pitch in $1,300.
And this is a goodwill, spirit of goodwill, having a cooperation with each other, and above all, not considering that children, but ch children go to any school, they are kids of every community, people, we love them, we want their betterment. So, I mean, but it should come in a phase where we think that they don't have the money. I am here for to recommend the pitching in their, whatever they're asking, 1300. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vas. Now, Hilda, the floor is basically yours with the discussion, and we're going to make a possible action. Up, to, It's up to 1300. Do you want to okay. keep it at that 1300 or you want to amend it? No, so I want to keep it. Point. I want to keep it at 1300. So if do I need read to the, read it again? Yeah, read the full motion and, and okay. then we need a second. Uh, possible motion to approve Nobel NPG for an amount of up to $1,300 uh, to rebuild the parent center at Nobel. Do I have a second? Becky seconded, but she's muted. Becky, you're muted. Yeah, I seconded it. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments before we call the vote? Nope, let's call the vote. All right, David Lasher? No. David Balin? No. Hilda? Yes. Jason is absent. Luis? No. Becky? Yes. Brandy is absent. Jennifer? Yes. Voss? Yes. Myself, yes. And Gabriel? I'm going to abstain and motion passes. We got five yeses, three noes, one abstain, two absent. <laughs> thank you, Alan, for your hard work. Oh, thank you, thank so, you. so much. This is going to be a little touch base about the ribbon. Yes, we will. And she'll talk to you. Rio will get in touch with the after. Social. Yes, after thank spring you. break. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to the next item. Next item is um, presentation, discussion, and possible action to write a support letter to renew an existing CUB for the continued sale of beer and wine for off-site consumption at existing 7-Eleven convenience store and C4-1P1 zone. This is the location on Tampa and uh, Rinaldi. Is there any representatives here from 7-Eleven or the law firm? There we go. I'll then bring you to end one second. All right, the floor is uh, for both of you. You're muted. Yep, there we go. <laughs> I caught it. There Thank you. you. Go. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jennifer Odin. Um, I have with me tonight, Jas Dillon, who is the franchisee at this 7-Eleven. He's been there for over 20 years now as the franchisee and also the area leader for 7-Eleven, Lenita Thompson is present as well. Um, I'll be, I think, hopefully short and sweet um, with respect to this request. This is, um, as Gabriel mentioned, the 7-Eleven on uh, Tampa and Rinaldi. It's been there for 20 plus years. Uh, this is simply a plan approval to continue the existing use, which includes the offsite sale of beer and wine under a conditional use permit and ABC license. Uh, there's been no problems, issues, concerns um, with respect to this location. We have reached out to the LAPD, specifically reached out to Sergeant uh, Jeff Cortina, uh, who confirmed that LAPD is not opposed to the renewal um, and confirmed what I just said, no, no issues, concerns, or problems from LAPD's perspective at this location. Additionally, we reached out to the council's office. Um, specifically, we spoke with uh, Dan Rosales, um, who confirmed that the council office is supportive of the request. Uh, so the reason that we're here before you tonight is simply just that renewal. The 2014 CUP did have a, a term limit in it and we're complying with that term limit to renew this um, CUP. There's no changes proposed. Um, business as usual would continue to take place uh, there at the 7-Eleven. As I mentioned, Jazz has been at this store for 20 plus years as the franchisee um, and extremely active in the community. Uh, I know you guys have been talking about schools. Um, one of the schools that Jazz has been extremely active uh, with and helpful um, from my understanding is Castle Bay Lane Elementary. Um, I understand 
uh, from Sandy Dorfman that he was integral with helping with the Science Center there and has continued to donate uh, for years, um, since 2013 even, and before that. Um, but uh, I believe 2013 is when the Science Center went in. So um, active member of your community and requesting your support for his business here in the uh, Porter Ranch area. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Uh, I see Becky has her hand up. Becky? Um, yeah, I, uh, Jennifer, thank you, and Jazz, and uh, Lenita, are you involved? Okay. Um, I just had a question. Um, are you guys open 24 hours now? Yeah, and we've been open 24 hours uh, for now almost 18 years. Okay, and then do you have to stop selling alcohol at 2 a.m.? or is At 2 a.m., yep. Okay, and you haven't had, I was, I'm worried about you guys. I just want to make sure you're not going to get hurt between midnight and six in the morning. You guys are no problems and okay with all of that. Yeah, no, Rebecca, great, great comment and question. Yeah, we haven't had an issue, one, because we have a drive-by security company that comes by there. But okay. more importantly, um, I, I'm very actively involved with the LAPD. Um, I also want to store in Pacoima. Um, so through the uh, LAPD, their pals, their foot, their uh, booster association. So I've always made my store available to the police officers, uh, especially the female officers, to use in my restrooms to be clean because they don't want to be running back to the station uh -huh. and then when they leave we load them up with free coffee and syrupy so they can come back again <laughs> oh. uh and and so so we haven't had again uh like uh, <clears throat> uh jennifer said we haven't had any issue with uh lapd uh vice squad or with abc or with neighborhood issues at all and i would just sort of uh smirking when you guys were having this discussion over 1300 dollars and i'm texting to jennifer <laughs> and i said all they got to do is call me we'll get we'll, we'll make that happen because oh, that's what happened. you can add on to it <laughs> well we did that to castle bay my but my biggest uh, success was in pacoima we didn't have a a decent school so i actually started a small charter school called discovery prep in at a a, a church in these little uh, halls, like when I, I forget who was mentioning that, hey, call LAUSD so-and-so, you can get the uh, uh, XYZ stuff. So we reached out, we literally picked up those big bungalows for dollar a piece, wow. dollar a piece. Where'd but here's the irony, <laughs> that buck was for the bungalow, but it costed us, the school, over $100,000 because the LAUSD's building and safety is a lot more stringent than LA, uh, US, uh, LA uh, building and safety alone. But from there, I found an investor. We ended up actually buying the Lutheran School in Silmar for a little over six and a half million dollars. So now Discovery Prep has a permanent home with proper schooling and all that. That's my community involvement there. And my community involvement here has been with Castle Bay and with Jane Stanton, if you guys remember her at the OY. Uh, we go back a long time and, and John Lee, uh, Greg Smith, all these guys are friends. They come by and uh, Pastor Dudley from uh, the uh, Shepherd of the Hills, you know, uh, they're all um, I'm here. I'm here not just to take a buck and run away. And, uh, you know, you guys call me up. I'm there. If, if uh, Nobel needs help to, you know, raise some funds and all that. Uh, Lenita and I will get back, get together, offer coupons where, you know, they, you get out there. We offer baskets, whatever you guys need. We'll make it happen. And that's what we did with even with the Foothill Boosters Association. They needed radar guns, okay, to track speedsters. So we raised money and got them uh, radar guns. And the first person who got busted was the president of our Booster Association. <laughs> <laughs> You better anyway, watch that's it, Jazz. Yeah. You're going to end up on the neighborhood council if you're not careful. <laughs> you know what? No, I, 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 I refuse to do that. I, I, I did my duty. Uh, for Jazz doesn't wear enough hats. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, Jennifer's yeah. asked me, said, do you recognize some of these folks? And I said, no. And I said, I've stepped back about seven years ago, more or less be spending more time with my family, with myself. But you know what? I'm still going to be uh, involved. Voss will appreciate this. In my religion, we are taught to do services either with money or with body or with meditation. So there's no excuse. Oh, I don't have money. Well, then come and volunteer. Well, my arm doesn't work. I got a frozen shoulder. Okay, then meditate. So there's there's a way for us to get involved. So anyway, that's my little yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, David Lasher. Well, Joss, I think I've made, I've supported you with at least one or two car payments uh, with my daily addiction to uh, <laughs> my daily Diet Coke Big Gulp and my the refill price that no one knows is refill price. But um, my wife thanks you for that. 
Yeah, I'm sure she does. <laughs> um, and you have supported Castle Bay, and that's uh, very laudable. And I, I appreciate you reaching out to what you're speaking to about Nobel. That's fantastic. And um, yeah, the property is always clean. You do have a security guard there during the day. I think I've always seen him there during the day. There's always someone there for that whole that that complex there. So that's yeah, support your effort there, and uh, good luck with that. Thank you. I agree. There's always LAPD there. There's always somebody there. Yeah, Very and I true. forgot to mention what David said. We do have a security guard there daytime. He's there from like eight in the morning till about four o'clock, making sure everything is smooth. Perfect. Thank you. Any other? I see a question from Glenn Bailey. One second, please. Glenn, the floor is yours. Okay. Okay. I think you can hear me. Okay. So, I, first, so Porter Ranch does a great job with your uh, putting the attachments up on your website. I want to acknowledge that, but I do want to just um, advise you that when you agendize, especially for land use cases, you really need to put the street address um, of any land use case on your agenda. I realize people can find it by clicking on your attachments, but it really needs to be on your agenda. And then if there's a case number, you know, best practice is to have that on there as well. So I just wanted to share that with you. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate that. All right, any further questions or comments or statements? Awesome. Then. I'll go ahead and make a motion to write a support letter to uh, 7-Eleven in support of continued sales of beer and wine. I'll second it. I'll second it. Whoa. <laughs> All right, David. So I, Gabriel made the motion. I'll do David Balin as second and David Lasher as third. Is that fair? Fair enough. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's call the vote, Christine. David Lasher. Yes, thank you. David Balin? Yes. Hilda? Yes. Jason Absent? Uh, Luis? Yes. Becky? Yes. Brandy Absent? Jennifer? Yes. Voss? Yes. Myself, yes. And Gabriel? Yes, 100%. Perfect. And motion passes, nine yeses, two absences. Thank you. And I will stay in touch with you guys for the letter. I'll take care Perfect. of it. Thank you all so much. Really appreciate you so your much. time. Yep. Thank Good you. Luck, for you guys. If you guys need any future fundraisers, I want to be part of the community even moving forward, doing your block party with COVID opening. Um, I would love to support any block parties you guys do for, uh, you know, around Porter Ranch. Come here. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank you everyone. for your support, guys. Thank Have a you. good night. Clean up the room real quick. All right. Let's move on to the next item. Next item is a discussion of possible action for solid NPG. I know a few of us are going to have to uh, recuse ourselves. I just want to Raise a hand. Who's going to recuse themselves? I just want to make sure we're going to have quorum. I'm going to recuse myself. You're recusing. I'm recusing. David Balin, you're rec you're recusing, right? You can't ask. He has to volunteer. <laughs> no, I'm recusing. I put my hand up to okay. That's so you right. know I was recusing. Okay. And if I'm gone, we'll have. Let's see if we have quorum. One, two, three, four, five, six. We will have a quorum. I will recuse myself. And Voss, if you can handle. Uh, this uh, motion, that'll be great. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. So this is the discussion and possible action to approve LAPD solid NPG for up to $5,000 to replace furniture and renovate the senior lead officer trailer. Jennifer, would you like to have a word on that? Yes, I just wanted to see if Tapio was on, if Tapio's on the call. I don't see them as a participant. So um, 
so um, the representative uh, Tapio did reach out to us. They've been doing a lot of um, fundraisers um, just to raise some money for LAPD Devonshire branch um, to do a lot of renovations. And I'm here. Uh, oh, hi. hi. Yeah, I don't know how this all works, but um, suddenly I, I was uh, logged in and, and signed up, but I didn't see anything. So here I am. No problem. Um, Tapio, would you like to just tell them a little bit about? Um... <clears throat> yeah, I actually, I have a presentation PowerPoint if I could get a uh, screen share. Uh, Christine, can you help with that? Let me see. I, are you talking to me, boss? Sorry. Yeah, if you can help him with the presentation. Oh, I think looks like I can get on here. Okay. All right. Uh, do you all see the... Uh, Yes. Yes. PowerPoint. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. Uh, <clears throat> uh, let's see if I can get. Okay. So uh, I'm here to, uh, um, uh, first of all, thank you for having me on. And also, uh, I want to thank you. You supported us on our uh, uh, detectives area upgrades. So thank you for that as well. Um, <clears throat> right now, the captain has asked us uh, to. Uh, do a new project, and it's uh, basically the, it's the senior lead officer's trailer. Uh, it needs upgrade and re renovation. We want to replace all of the furniture in it. And so um, here's some of the reasons uh, that this needs to be done. And believe me, it was a longer list, but I'm sure you wouldn't want to read a real long list right now. So this covers most of it right here. I'm going to give you a moment to take look it over. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, so the... The part we're looking for help for you from you is for the furniture, and uh, just that portion of it. It's fifty four thousand, and of that, the five thousand six hundred ninety eight dollars is uh, installation labor cost. And uh, this is what the the, pro the estimate showed the proposal to do. These are the new furniture that they're asking for. Uh, the captain is asking for this one's in the uh, um, supervisor's office area, and this is the main area of the uh, senior lead officer's trailer. And so, as you can see, some design work has been already done on there, and uh, they want to put new desks, chairs, and we're also going to renovate. Uh, we're not asking you for uh, help on the renovation. We're taking care of that. <clears throat> and uh, I can go back anytime you need uh, to any, any slide. So here's the total cost of the project. The furniture, 48,488. The installation is there. The remodel part is 7,050. Flooring, uh, 6,300. And uh, that flooring estimate uh, assumes that we do not tear off the old flooring. So that's still going to be worked on later. Uh, and then they're going to uh, up, renovate the, the, the stairs and the ramp up to the, uh, to the door of the trailer. So the total cost is $72,012. OK, this is what the current offices look like. So as you can see, they have a mismatch of all kinds of different cabinets and files and uh, mostly just desks, not very much storage spaces. Uh, this kind of looks like my desk, but anyway, it's just an example of lack of storage. They have to pile things up on their desks and it's kind of a mess. And the floors are in really bad shape. Some places are even warped a little bit, you know, so scratches. Uh, this is the, I think the, uh, one of the office offices in the back. 
And that's it. Do you uh, want me to want to bring back any of the slides, or uh, do you have any questions? And Tap, can you tell them how much you guys have raised so far in funds? Uh, okay. Um, uh, I have sent NPGs to eight uh, neighborhood councils asking 5000 each toward the furniture. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I've, I've gotten uh, executive approval to recommend approval from, uh, uh, let's see, uh, <laughs> I'm dealing with eight, so my head is spinning on which is which. So, um, and you guys have done fundraisers and yes, we have some, yeah. we have, a, we have done fundraisers. We have a pretty, pretty good amount already. Uh, we're going to be running our uh, pancake breakfast is coming up on the 30th. On the 30th, uh, which, yes. Yeah, and that's going to be another, it's nice to be back when the, with a community event like that. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, we have uh, also what we call our solidarity program, where we just reach out to the community for help. And uh, boy, did they come through during the pandemic for us. You know, they just, they help us a, a lot. Um, and uh, um Let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, that's our fundraising part, mostly right there. We've already gotten a commitment from uh, Council District 12 as well. Great. Right. To help, so. Thank you, Tab. Okay, uh, any other questions? David Lasher has a question. Okay. Well, more of a comment than a question, but um, I don't know if you guys have, has anybody ever seen the LAPD budget? You read that. Uh, this is not a this is not a uh, uh, city structure. The trailer is not a city property. So they, uh, if if that's what you're thinking, uh, they are not going to. Uh, they, you know, they don't pay for any of this kind of stuff for that. You're on mute. Before we for go further, I would like to place this motion for discussion and possible action to approve LAPD solid NPG for $5,000 to replace the furniture and remove, renovate the senior lead officer trailer. So anybody can second? Did someone Austin, mute me? Quickly, um, Glenn Bailey has his hand up. And I was muted by somebody. Okay, so. Do we have to make a second before discussion? Well, point of order, I was speaking and all of a sudden I got muted. Who did that? Okay, no, I don't know how you have been muted. No, I didn't mute myself. I was in mid-sentence. Yeah. So can you check at your end if there is any problem? Because I... No, I'm not muted now. My, my issue is that I know it's going to go, but we spent $4,000 on the doors to the lobby last year. Yeah. And now they're going to be replacing everything in the lobbies with bulletproof glass and ballistic uh, armor. Yeah. Um, I hear your point that the trailer is privately owned versus yeah. publicly owned. Yeah. But, um, you know, the LAPD spent $10 million on electric cars they didn't even use that they then sold at a loss with three, 400 miles on each one. So I'm just really, they get $1.7 million, but they don't have $70,000 for their officers' trailers. It's kind of disappointing in that respect. But I understand it's privately, but still a little odd. Sure. No, what I meant was that, uh, do we have to second it before we start discussion or? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So anybody to second it? I'll second it. Okay, now we can discuss. Go, go ahead, David Lesher. So I, I appreciate what um, is being said in terms that it's privately owned, it is a trailer, it's on public property. I don't know how that happened, but I'm sure it was codified somehow. Um, <clears throat> we just were asked to pay last year $4,000 for the doors to the lobby um, and they're spending now, God knows how many tens of thousands to put ballistic armor and bulletproof glass in all LAPD lobbies. And uh, I see this and then I see $10 million literally wasted in electric vehicles that uh, police officers are using to drive to go get manicures, literally, literally, and driving around on personal errands. And then some of those cars are sold with three and 400 miles on them at a loss. That's kind of disappointing that, you know, we get asked to spend money from our neighborhood council funds to do these kind of ventures, but they never seem not to have money for spending like, again, $10 million on electric cars. They don't even use They just let them collect dust in the parking lot. 
and uh, support solid, support the, the senior lead officers, and they can always use space. The, the other weird thing is that high profile individuals, so the, the public doesn't even get to see these spaces, but make sure that they're you know above par for high profile persons. I just that's that's a little bit odd. But that's it. So, Glenn Bailey. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn Bailey. Glenn Bailey, are you there? I think uh, you have to let him in. Okay. I don't have access, unfortunately. So who has that access? I think you and Gabriel, but since Gabriel uh, is not on, it would be you. I think he has you as the co-host. Let me check. Can you hear me? Oh, there he is. Okay, okay. There you go, Glenn. Okay. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you don't need to promote me as a panelist just to speak, um, I don't think. Okay. Um, so, um, so Glenn Bailey, uh, I just want, the, there was a question earlier about the contributions from neighborhood councils. So um, one of them I can report, North Regist uh, is the one that has a recommendation from its executive committee to, to the board of uh, funding the whole right. uh, the request amount of $5,000. Um, uh, however, you're ahead of us in the queue. So you're going first. So our meeting's not till next week. Um, I just do want to point out that um, the budget, even though LAPD has a large budget, the funding for capital improvements actually comes from a separate pot of money. That's just the way the city operates. And I'm sure if the city found, I don't know how many, how much it would cost to, you know, build an actual permanent facility addition to the Devonshire police station, as opposed to, you know, a trailer facility, you know, that that would be done and it would be state of the art, et cetera. But what we're dealing with right now is a trailer and it does house our senior lead officers plus the community relations office. So, um, you know, this this will help make the, the lives and therefore hopefully the morale and also the work of the senior lead officers um, um, better. And I just did want to give you um, assurance that North Regist is headed, is one of the eight and we are headed towards approving the $5,000. Uh, for this project. Thank you. Thank you. Glenn. Thanks, Glenn. So, uh, uh, also, uh, I'd yeah, like yeah. to add one thing. Uh, uh, this office is not just used by, you know, high level dignitaries, it's used by the public as well. Okay, so can you explain to us, like, uh, when you are going to start this one, how long will it take? And how are the we are getting the funds from? Um, well, the we're getting all of the funds from our, most of the funds are going to come from our fundraisers, which I mentioned earlier, the pancake breakfast coming up. We have a nice sizable amount. We have about uh, almost $30,000 in our account right now already towards it. Uh, as far as starting the project, we, uh, we could, we can pretty much start it anytime uh, as soon as the contractor is able to do it. Uh, as far as completing it, that's a little out of my, I don't, I don't know how long it's going to take all of that take. Uh, it may take a while to actually manufacture all of the furniture. As far as I know, I don't know exactly, but uh, bottom line is, is we're going to do everything we can to get this done. It's what the captain has asked for. Uh, and, uh, the, and she has gone through a, a lot of um, detail figuring out what they want. So. So do you have any projection uh, when you ex are expecting to complete it? Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Uh, you came do, a little... Do you have any projection date by which you expect to be this project to be completed? Any date? How long uh, will it? Uh, yeah, I put it on, I put some dates on the uh, NPG. Um, it's June, according to the NPG. Hold on. It's in the NPD document that they submitted. It's like late June. Yeah, yeah uh, I don't have it in front of me right now. I'll fan. I should have had that. Okay. But, uh, okay, uh, no but, yeah. So, so if I understand correctly, you have arrangements for thirty thousand dollars, and you need balance forty two thousand dollars. Yeah, is that correct? So right. uh, we have a few. Uh, we we have other things we have to spend out of that thirty. We have a lot of expense monthly expenses. Uh, we have insurances that we have to pay for. So we don't really have that much 
total to use towards this project. We're, we're going to need to run our uh, fundraisers to get it done. All right. No, I agree with you, but I just have one uh, thing to consider that since this uh, fiscal year is coming to an end in June and we have to review our expenses and everything, and this project may take, I think, four to six months. I don't know how long, but uh, will it be okay if we consider 3,000 at this time and after reviewing our uh, budget, we, will, we can do this year or early next year. Uh, will it be okay if we approve 3,000 at this time and $2,000 later? Uh, well, we'll take whatever we can get, uh, but okay. uh, we, we don't expect it to last that long. You know, uh, the, should, once we get the funds, uh, I don't think it'll take more than maybe a couple of months to complete the project, but if I had to guess. Okay, so. because I, I think uh, I consider that we should give 3,000 at this time. And uh, once they are like, uh, we have review our budget, we can let you know, and then you can uh, uh, make another uh, presentation for the fund. So then we can uh, go from there. Will it be okay with you? So uh, w when is your, uh, when's your next budget start? And actually our treasurer is not here today in this meeting. So he will be there and we can uh, ask him to review. And uh, if whenever we have the fund, we can go from there. Uh -huh. Okay, well, that's, you know, that's all up to you. Uh, so, you know, and I'm, I'm fine with whatever you decide on that. So I, I want to amend this motion to uh, approve this motion for $3,000 at this time. So, and uh, anybody wants to second that one? I'll second it, boss. Okay, so now can we, any, anyone else want to speak on this one? Anybody else? If none, then go, Christian, can we go for the vote on this 3000 amended motion? I, yes. okay, just hold on. So I make this motion amendment to approve it for $3,000. Okay, perfect. And I second that. But so we'll we call the vote, uh, yes. David Lasher. Yes. David Balin has recused himself. Hilda. Did Hilda recuse herself too? No, I'm here. Oh, okay. I said yes. Oh, okay. I didn't hear you. Thank you. Uh, Jason is absent. Luis. Yes. Becky recused herself. Brandy is absent. Jennifer. Yes. Voss. Yes. And myself. Yes. So it looks like motion approved. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck. So the amendment was approved. Uh, yes. So yes. you can. We will just uh, talk to our treasurer and see how the funds are going, and then we can let you know. Then we we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you. So then, okay. so can we? Let me call. Hold on. So how can we call them back? The recusing person, board members. So uh, can I can I ask a question here? You yes, you approved an amendment, but you, so that changed the main motion. Yes, please. to three thousand. So do you not have to vote on the main motion now? Oh uh, no, not at this time. Okay, thank you. All right. So uh, anything else from me? No, the just of us will keep you updated on that one. Whenever okay. we have the uh, situation, uh, okay. so permitting, we will go from there. Okay. For thank thanks you. for having me today and. Uh, Hopefully we can uh, get this job, job done soon. Thank Thanks. you for all your thank you so thank you for all your work. Thank you. Thank bye you bye. So bye. And boss, I uh, called everybody to come back. Okay. So hopefully thank they'll you. join us soon. Thank you. Gabriel, are you back? I am. I am. Okay. You can I'm take it from back. Me. Okay. Thank you. Your next item. Next item is a presentation, discussion, and possible action to write or sign on a support letter for Mobility Plan 2035 whenever uh, for uh, repaving streets. And let's see, Michael is here. Michael, let's bring you in. Are you here, Michael? I am. 
everybody Hi. thanks for having me thank you the floor is yours thank you uh so i am michael schneider i'm also on my neighborhood council um mid city west and i know how hard this work can be so thanks for all you do i'm going to go ahead and share my screen i have a less than five minute presentation and would be happy to answer any questions all right so excited to talk to you tonight about Healthy Streets LA. Uh, this is the ballot measure that we're working on in the city of Los Angeles that would result in less traffic, it would help us fight climate change, and it would make the streets safer for all modes of transportation. A few facts that you may or may not be aware of. In Los Angeles, uh, the way we live with so many cars and so much traffic is very expensive, and our local economy loses $19 billion a year in lost productivity from people just getting stuck in gridlock. The average bus is now slower than the average cyclist or scooter rider, less than 11 miles per hour. Traffic crashes are a leading cause of death of kids in LA. And on average, a pedestrian is killed once every three days, which is a rate that is four times the national average. So it's not just that we live in a big city and big cities can be dangerous for people. It's that our big city is especially dangerous even to just cross the street. And despite a mobility plan passed in 2015, Vision Zero in 2017, the problem's just gotten worse. In 2021, more drivers were killed or severely injured by other drivers, more pedestrians were killed or severely injured by drivers, and more cyclists were killed or severely injured by drivers. And the most amazing stat is all the cars you see on the road every day are going three miles or less. I'm sorry, half of all the cars you see on the road every day are going three miles or less. So there's an enormous opportunity to get people out of those cars for the shorter trips to the grocery store, stuff like that, if they had safe and reliable options. Lastly, our air is pretty awful. We have one of the highest rates of childhood asthma. And we were just uh, two weeks ago, uh, we were voted the most polluted urban, uh, area, urban area in the country. And all of us smoke the equivalent to up to four cigarettes per day just by breathing. So the city is aware of these safety issues. And on the left-hand side, you see the high injury network. These are 6% of streets in the city of Los Angeles that account for 70% of the injuries and deaths in the city. On the right, this is the mobility plan 2035 passed by city council in 2015 that has 1500 miles of safety improvements, including for people that walk, people that bike, people that take transit and people that drive. And if you haven't noticed, these maps look pretty similar. If we just implemented our already adopted mobility plan, we would go a long way to making the city a lot safer. Unfortunately, we're not getting it done. We've implemented 3% of the plan in seven years. And the LA Times recently covered us and calculated that at that rate, it would take, them, take the city 200 years to fully implement the mobility plan 2035. So the concept is very simple. Every time a street is repaved in the city of Los Angeles for a minute, it's a blank canvas, it's just black asphalt, it has to be restriped. And it's essentially a free opportunity to stripe in a crosswalk, a bike lane, a bus lane, curb extensions, things that the mob mobility plan calls for. Unfortunately, what we're doing today is we're repaving and restriping the same configuration as it was before the repaving and ignoring our own mobility plan. And that's how you get to 3% in seven years. So Healthy Streets LA, is a city of Los Angeles ballot measure that would mandate that the city follow its own already adopted mobility plan anytime it repaves streets. The results would be that the streets would be a lot safer for everybody, including those that drive. Uh, we'd give people real alternatives to the car for those shorter trips and help get some cars off the road. And we'd have a healthier, quieter, and more peaceful city. We have built a broad coalition of support, people that care about climate, business, labor, uh, mobility, justice, things like that. And as of last night, we are up to 23 neighborhood councils that have fully passed uh, the same letter of support that we're asking you guys to consider tonight. Uh, so you can learn more at healthystreetsla.com. And I'll just say one more thing before questions. There's a parallel process going on at city council and city council does not need the voters permission to follow its own plan. They can pass an ordinance anytime they want saying we're gonna implement our already adopted plan when we repave streets. So all the neighborhood councils that support this um, help us also at council, uh, potentially getting something done there and even uh, cutting the process short. So with that, happy to answer any questions and thanks for having me. Thank you, Michael. Uh, David Lasher. I support this with just in, um, bridal enthusiasm. My son was rushed to the emergency room three months ago, uh, riding his bike to work. The sidewalk and the road conditions are so bad. 
on Nordoff that he uh, wrecked his bike and knocked a tooth out of the front of his face, has a scar on his face now as a result. And uh, we have insurance, thankfully, but $5,000 mercy room bill later, um, if, this, if there had been a bike lane on Nordoff um, where this happened, it wouldn't have been an issue in the first place. Uh, so I absolutely, we've got too many people being hurt and killed on LA streets and not enough opportunities for cyclists to ride safely to work or to school. So sorry to hear that, David. Thank you. Uh, I got uh, John, the floor is yours. Oh, this is actually Michelle now. Michelle, Michelle. you guys switched on me. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> she graduated. <laughs> um, my, my question is, is this the same Safe, safe Streets program that's running um, I guess they're, it's all the way by CSUN and it's going to go all from CSUN now all the way down to Victor. Is this a continuation? Like it's going to be expanded from the, what you have now? Is this as part of the same? I'm not familiar with the exact project you're talking about, but I would the be The one that's called Great Streets or something. It's called Great Streets. It's going down Reseda Bowl. It's going, it's been Oh, it's been going, it's been in effect. Oh, they've had it already, what, seven years already. It's, and it's all, and it goes all the way to CSUN and students ride their bike, go in the bike lane. It's not the same. That's a city same. initiative. That's a city project. It's totally separate. Oh, it's separate. Okay. All right. So I was just wondering if, you know, because it has the words safe streets and, and you're going to put those, you're going to put those um, bubble, you know, you're going to close off the lanes or how, how is it, how the people going to park? Is Are the lanes going to be closed off? So um, there's no single answer to that. Um, so first, maybe if it's all right, I'll just share my screen quickly and you guys can see what's planned uh, for Porter Ranch. So um, everything you see in a dark green line is a protected bike lane that's physically protected from cars. It does include Reseda Boulevard up to Rinaldi. Um, everything you see in, and some of these may already be done. Anything you see in the yellow color are bike lanes. Um, and then one of my favorite parts of this is a neighborhood enhanced network. So these light blue lines that you see are uh, traffic calming on residential streets to discourage like ways cut through traffic and make residential streets for residents and not for cut through. Um, and then there are no bus lanes um, that are planned in the mobility plan in this part of Los Angeles. Okay, so, so, so what's gonna protect the bikes? So you're gonna have those like those uh, bumpers that they have, you know, posts that they have is that going to protect the lane, the, the, the lane? What's going to yeah. protect them? Yeah, so usually the city uh, protects bike lanes in one of two ways. They either put bollards, like you're referring to, yeah. or they protect them with parked cars. With parked cars, okay. So the parking will be uh, on the other, will be different. The parking will change. Will the parking change? It, it depends on which street and, and how wide the street is and what the city needs to do. But in general, if, they're, uh, if parking is there and they have the width, they put the bike lane at the curb and then they put a three foot buffer and then they have parking. Okay, so the fire department and all the, all the, all the safety, uh, you know, and the, and the fire department, the police department will be are part of this uh, initiative or plan. You know, or are, they, are they involved with the planning of this? Uh, well, when the mobility plan was passed by city council in 2015, there was a tremendous amount of work done across city departments and with different communities, and they were part of the conversation. Then. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. I got Becky. Yeah. Um, thank you for the presentation, Michael. Um, will they be uh, uh, cutting it down to one lane each way? Uh, again, it depends on what the, are the plan. I know what are the plans for that because there's no set formula. Um, some streets are wide. So let's take the different elements. You don't need to do anything to put in a crosswalk. That's easy. Um, for the neighborhood enhanced network, you don't need to uh, that those are residential streets that that question um, the, the concept of taking a, taking a lane is irrelevant for a bus lane, which your uh, neck of the woods doesn't have. Uh, they would typically convert parking only at rush hour to, for the bus lane. For bike lanes, it depends on the width of the street. Some streets are wide enough where you, if you just narrow the car lanes, you can actually fit a bike lane in. If the street is not wide enough, it becomes a conversation with the community. It could be that the community is fine giving up the center turn lane, and that creates enough widths for the bike lane. It could be that parking on one side of the street is okay with the community. It could be that one vehicle traffic lane on one side of the street is okay with the community. 
but that would be a conversation and there's no um, blanket answer for that. So how can we help you with this if we don't really know what the exact specifics would be for Port Ranch? Because we we had the, you know, on Wilbur, we there was a situation about 10 or 15 years ago where they they cut it down to one lane each way and just would it, you know, it's a, it's a great idea in theory, but in actuality, how will it really work? So uh, the the specifics of what a community, what if it's if trade offs are necessary, what the community would want to trade off, are by definition not in the mobility plan because it's a conversation with the community, but it's very well defined in terms of which streets would have treatment, and uh, where things would go. But what the trade-offs are, are not specific in the plan because those are conversations with communities. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I know you have, you sent us a potential possible letter. Yes. Uh, that we can sign on. Um, have the other councils used the same letter or did they write their own support letters? Uh, nearly all the 23 neighborhood councils have used that verbatim. Uh, a couple have tweaked a few words here and there, but okay. it's been pretty consistent. Thank you, board members. Have you guys looked at attachment Q, which has a copy of that letter? I've read it, yes. Okay. And uh, do you guys, is it a good idea for us to use the same letter as a question? You guys like the letter? I'm good with it. Speaking for myself, of course. All right. So let's try, let me put the letter up real quick for everybody to see it, and yeah, then we'll the come up right after. One second. Can everybody see the letter? Yes. Perfect. Um, you guys want to? Yes. Well, I was going to say the, the preambles are a lot of what I already said. The reason we have them in there is, believe it or not, city council members don't always know this stuff. And so we think it's a good idea to uh, reemphasize it. The, the crux of the letter and where your support would come in is at the very last paragraph. Which is over here. Yes. Everybody had a chance to look at it, at least glance at it. What I'll do is I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, sign on to the support letter for the mobility plan 2035. Do I have a second? Second, second David Balin. Okay. Beach on that one, Dave. You guys are real close, but I'll give it to last year this time because I gave it Balin last time. So you guys two and three. Uh, Great minds think alike. That was perfect timing for both of you. All right, let me call the vote then. Um, David Lasher? Yes. Thank you, David Valen? Absolutely. Thank you, Hilda? Yes. Okay, Jason is absent. Uh, Lewis? Yes. Thank you, Becky? Becky, you're muted. Yes. Thank you. Brandy's absent. Jennifer? Yes. Thank you, Voss? Yes. Thank you, Christine? Yes. And me, yes. And motion passes. Sorry, Christine, I jumped ahead of you on the, it's on okay. the uh, vote count. But thank you. Thank you, Michael, for being here. Thank you very much for your time. And Gabriel, um, I have a Google sheet with the email addresses to make it easy to send out. Who should I send that to? You can send it to me. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, my, yeah, my email address because we communicated prior. So I do. Perfect. Thank you, Thank you very day. much. Have Bye -bye. a wonderful day as well. All right. The fun stuff start real quick. We can go through this real quick. Uh, Christine, you want to handle number 16, 17, 18? Yes. So I want to put a motion to approve the January 25th draft minutes. I'll second that. Okay, perfect. I'll take a vote. David Lasher. Yes, no problem. 
David Balin? Yes. Hilda? Yes. Jason is absent. Luis? Yes. Becky? Yes. Brandy's absent. Jennifer? Yes. Voss? Yes. Myself, yes. And Gabriel? Yes. Okay, motion approved. So we'll move on to the March 9th draft minutes. Um, a motion to approve that. I'll second it. Okay, and I'll take a vote. David Lasher? Can't hear you. I'm oh, sorry, fighting my computer. Yes. Thank you. David Balin? Yes. Hilda? Yes. Jason Absent? Luis? Yes, ma'am. Becky? Yes. Brandy Absent? Jennifer? Yes. Boss? Yes. Myself, yes. And Gabriel? Yes. Okay, motion approved. And then finally, the motion to approve the April 5th draft minutes. I'll second that. Gabriel seconds. Thank you. And we'll take a vote. David Lasher? Yes. David Balin? Yes. Hilda? Yes. Jason absent. Luis? Yes, ma'am. Becky? Yes. Brandy absent. Jennifer? Yes. Voss? Yes. Myself? Yes. And Gabriel? Yes. Okay, motion approved. That was easy enough. Thank you, Christine. Let's You're move welcome. on to item number 19. Uh, and Treasurer Hector is absent. So we can move on to number 20. Item number 20, board member comments. Are there any board members who want to make committee comments? Gabriel, do you want me to give the board really quick a um, update on where we're at, where we're spending money? Uh, oh, you, you have it in front of you? Go for it. I do. So just a quick, where is it here? Well, it was here. Oh. Bottom line is, um, we have about $19,000. Um, I, I lost it. It came, it came off, but we have about $19,000. We have about $4,400 that, that, that still needs to be paid from that 19. So we're down to probably down to about 15,000, um, less the money that we just spent tonight. So we're probably looking at right around $10,000 less left for the year. No, and man. I can I can send a snapshot to the board. Um, I'll send it to you, Gabriel. You can send it out to the board so they can see it. Sounds good. Thank you. You got it. Thank you. Any other board member comments for committee comments? Um, Go ahead, Becky. Okay. Just uh, in Devonshire Division, uh, for um, we were in a meeting um, with our senior lead officer for Porter Ranch, uh, John and one of the things that everybody kind of needs to be aware of is the back they're entering our homes residential burglaries are up they're entering our homes through the backyard they're breaking our sliding glass doors or our windows and that's how they're gaining access so you can get a film to cover your windows um so that they can't get in and um that's one of the things that he talked about. The other thing is, is they're stealing the uh, things underneath the cars. I forget the name. Out of the converse. If we could encourage people to clean out the garages and put their cars in the garage, uh, so you know there's less access to those those kinds of things. And um, just everybody be vigilant. Uh, keep your eyes and ears open and look out for your neighbors. And uh, John Parker, um, they're doing a big upswing in uh, neighborhood watch meeting. So if anybody you know would like to have a neighborhood watch meeting, um, I can give you the information on how to contact them or um, you can just contact them personally. And that's it, thank you. Thank you, Becky. Abbas, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> just a moment. Okay. Uh, this is uh, basically for the information of the board in general, but Jason in particular, that there was a small fire uh, in the back of my house uh, on the 118 freeway on the, where it was before in November. So the fire people, fire trucks came and they extinguished it. They were here for about an hour or so. So I just want to inform the board and the Jason because he's looking after the maintenance of that part. He's taking it up. If he can add this one also, 
So that will be appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Vas. Hilda? Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, the two events that we participated last weekend, um, the one for Ch at Chatsworth um, High School, um, I think we handled it really well. We had enough people to handle a couple of hours. And um, I feel next time when we have a longer volunteer time, if we could all pitch in, we're all a team. We're basically, this is like another family. We should all work together because if we are um, asked to be there from eight o'clock to six o'clock, there's no way one person or two or three can handle this. So this is something that it's teamwork, you guys. So um, I was there longer than I committed. Becky was with me longer than she committed. I was really exhausted when I, but I was happy that I did something obviously, and it was successful, but I think we need more support, even for like, if we can say two hours, each one of us, and we could team up, let's just do this because like we were asking people to help us to put the tent down. I mean, we shouldn't be doing that. And I feel that the, if we, cause we are all there together, we can know each other more. We can, you know, like I said, we're a family. So let's do this. Let's do it. Let's not hesitate to participate. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. Any other board member comments? No further comments. Uh, next meeting is on May 11, 2022, unless if something pops up and I'll call a special meeting. Hopefully there isn't, but you never know. And let's uh, adjourn a meeting at 8.37 p.m. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. Congratulations, Gabriel. That was a quick one. Woo! We Thank beat you. 9 o'clock, which is great. Awesome. Good night. I have a theory. I have a theory on why it was shorter, but I'll see Bye. you later. All right. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy, Easter. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Easter. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.